So I was thinking about what I could do for a first video and several ideas rolled around. I eventually settled on this one because hey, why not start on a positive note? It's not like the bad stuff is going anywhere. So, Akira, it's amazing. But you should know that as an anime fan. Hell, you should know that as a fan of media in general. It's so good that Chronicle decided to use it instead of telling its own damn story. But why is it so good? Well, the answer isn't actually that simple. In fact, it comes down to many elements that all work together. So let's get the obvious stuff out of the way first. Number one, the animation also known as orgasmation. This animation is amazing. Like, it still needs to be topped, and that's saying something about the state of the anime industry right now. Every frame looks like a painting and is meticulously crafted. Except this one. This one is shit. The decision to record everything beforehand really paid off in this instance because it really adds to the immersion of the film. Number two. The soundtrack. With the Dadas. <laughs> It's foreboding, unique, and strictly its own. It fits the film so well it's almost scary, especially considering the composer did it without a finished script. It only shows when you realize that there's actually less than an hour of music for a two hour movie, and that the movie reuses a lot of music. But thankfully, the music is so good that you don't even notice. And number three, this guy. But that's not why we are here. You see, if I was talking about this stuff, you would probably left to go watch the new Keemstar video, I don't know. But we are here to ask the question, why is it so good? Why do we keep coming back to watch it? I don't know, you tell me, you lazy otaku. Let's find out together and see what makes this movie tick. First, a lesson in filmmaking. There's a rule known as show, don't tell. This rule applies to all things in media from literature to video games, but filmmaking especially because film is a visual medium. Instead of telling us that something happened or a character is supposed to act like this, so does that we can see it on screen. If you tell us it would be like reading a bad summary on Wikipedia, which is the place that everyone goes when you want to learn what the fuck dolphins eat. So this show don't tell or visual storytelling as I and many other people like to call it is important because it allows the audience to get invested easier. Sadly, a lot of animes have problems with this. You see, a lot of anime are based on manga and sometimes need use big chunks of text of exposition. But sometimes when they get translated over to anime, they keep them in the dialogue and text walls as is and they show instead of telling. Akira, which is based based on the manga of the same name, did not fall into this problem. Maybe because the director was the creator of the manga. Or maybe everybody actually gave a shit. Maybe they even had some sense knocked into them. Discipline! The best example of Akira's use in it is the character of Tetsuo. Take a look at the opening scene of the film. He's rash, unpredictable, and acts before he thinks. We untold this, but it's shown it instead, giving us a better understanding of his character. This also foreshadows most of his turn, seeing as much of his actions are due to him without thinking first, including going after Akira. Uh, he's the one? He's the one who's been invading my head all along! Where is he? Where's this Akira? Tell me now! What? Huh? Kyoko said you'll wake him up, and if you awaken Akira like that, when that happens, no one will be able to stop him at all. To prevent it, we have to stop you! Ridiculous! Akira's already- Where is he? No! Don't! Stay This also extends to Akira's backstory. His story is told through visuals without any dialogue. But we get the gist of what's happening because, well, the movie is showing us instead of telling us that he was like this when he was a kid. Look how happy he is! You're gonna destroy the city one day, aren't you? It's the same with what seems to be more important exposition, like the explanations of Kakita's powers as how they relate to Tetsuo's. We are never exactly told how they work, we're instead told how they work through visuals. And whatever the fuck these are. This is why Akita is so good. He uses its medium correctly and tells a story through its visuals, and it never talks down to its audience. I know a lot of people who think Akita is really confusing and things just happen for no reason, but if you rewatch it, you start to notice things that you may have not noticed beforehand. It's this type of rewatchability that makes it a great film, and it's also shit like this. At least that's my stupid opinion. Leave it in the comment section below why you think Akira is so good. 
Well, if you didn't like it, tell me why, because I'm open to discussion. And by discussion, I mean you're wrong and I'm right. My name is Legion Rex, and I'm gonna stay here and watch Akira again. We.